I drive everyone crazy trying to get the sound that I can hear in my head to come out of the speakers. It's my voice. That is my voice. We're going there to have a chat, but it just so happens that the instruments are there as well, so who knows? I plan to trick both of these guys into teaching me all their tricks. It's going to be very interesting. When the three of us get together, what's going to happen? Probably a fist fight. Let's talk about the, the three subjects, Jimmy, Jack, and the Edge. How did you get them three on board? And besides them being like amazing guitar players, why did you pick them three? Well, uh, we, when we started out, we were like, what three guitars should we get? And the first thing we thought was, we'll never get Jimmy Page, so let's move on. And then one morning I woke up and I said, we have to try. You know, if you look at all the interviews that Jimmy Page has done since Led Zeppelin broke up, there's only a couple, and they're like three minutes long. Yeah. Because Jimmy is very private, and you know, but um, we just, it took us six months writing letters, begging. I flew to London just to talk to him about it, and uh, finally he said yes. So, uh, yeah. And not only did he say yes, but in this movie he opens up. Yeah. He, a lot. Uh, he takes us into his home, he plays his favorite albums, he plays air guitar. He shows us how to play songs. It's pretty, pretty intense. Right on. Did um, you know when you had all of them like, you know, jamming out together? Did you have any like jam sessions with them? Did I? Yeah. No. Off I, camera. I, or? I think mostly I was drooling, <laughs> just going, "Oh my God, I can't believe I'm here watching the, the edge." Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we were everywhere. We were in Dublin in in the Edge's studio, what they call the HQ, where they write all their songs and record all their songs. And we were in Nashville with Jack, while he's sitting in the attic writing a song yeah. from beginning to end from like pencil on paper to recording it and Jimmy in his home you know or in the studio showing us how to play Ramble On it's like you know yeah. I couldn't I, I, you know pinching myself was not that I probably had to you know, take a hammer to my skull <laughs> to think like okay I have to direct now yeah yeah. it's like how did I get here but let's talk about that scene when, when Jack you know creates that song did you know, did he call you up and say, "Hey, I've got. I'm about to do something. You better get here right now. Or you're, you know, you're not going to get it." Or how did how did that come about? That scene. I had asked him. You know, he um, he talks about you have to write songs quickly. You can't be precious. He's, he 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 has this contempt for artists that spend mm -hmm. you know a month on one song, changing the backing tracks and doing overdubs. And he thinks that music sounds fake or sounds overbuilt uh, or overproduced. And his feeling is like you got to write a song quickly. You got to put your guts into it. It's got to be raw, and you feel that in the White Stripes and the Rock on Tours, and now his new band. You feel how raw mm -hmm. and original. And he said that to me, and I was like, well, okay, well, if that's the case, if that's what you really believe in, show us that. So we got we had a whole day in the attic of this farmhouse, and I put the camera crew on the one side, and I said, okay, we'll just be over here, and you be over there, and pretend we're not there, and you. I want to see you write a song from the first moment you think about it to the moment it's it's taped because mm -hmm. he actually still does things anal analog yeah. like, on reel to reel tape and then and you see that in the movie a guy yeah. writing a song from the beginning I've never seen that in the movie before yeah so you, you know you, you three different stories and you shot them all over what was the most difficult part like the diff most difficult shoot or I'll tell you the most difficult part is is what not to put in the movie yeah there's there's uh, scenes of the three of them playing Cashmere, the famous nice. Led Zeppelin song Cashmere. There's Jack playing on a porch. He's playing I Fought Piranhas to a herd of cows, and they're all watching him. You know, there's Edge writing other songs. There's Edge. Uh, it, all this incredible stuff, mm -hmm. but it had to sort of, um, you know, there are three different guitarists in this movie, and I wanted to weave their stories together and find a certain commonality. Yeah. So there's all these all this wonderful stuff that you know you look at and say, oh my god, I can't believe I'm watching this, but it's not in the movie. But it'll be on the DVD. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to ask you. If you could just tell us about some stuff that you're going to be putting on the DVD. Um, it's still being figured out now, but but them playing Cashmere is one of them, and uh, two other Led Zeppelin songs and White Stripes songs. Telling the Edge finally tells us a story about how he got his nickname. Oh, nice. Because I read everywhere. Uh, I tried to find out how he got the name The Edge. Yeah. Uh, because you could, it's imagine, you know, they're filming him and he's pulling up to Warner Brothers and they say, what, you know, looking for an ID. Mm -hmm. they, they check everyone's ID, even George Clooney. 
And Edge pulls up, <laughs> and he's like, and I'm filming in the background, and he says, what's your name? And he goes, The Edge. <laughs> and the guy the yes. guy at Burbank, you know, in, in Warner Brothers goes, excuse me? He goes, I'm The Edge. And the, guy, and, and just, the younger guy goes, <laughs> he didn't that's need awesome. idea. But you know, how did he get the name The Edge? And so that that story is going to be in the DVD. That, yeah, things that, like that. And, nice. And, and just guitar playing. You know, yeah. if you, for those enthusiasts that want to see where Jimmy puts his fingers on Cashmere or when how Jack plays that mean slide guitar. Yeah. That's all going to be there. So nice. Of it. The amazing thing though is you got to see this movie in a theater. Yeah, absolutely. Because, uh, what we did is we got one of the best sound mixers in Hollywood. This guy Skip Levy and. There are 81 music cues in the movie, and it's a third of them are Led Zeppelin, and a third are U2 and White Stripes. And it's just it's a wall to wall music, and it, you know even if I didn't do my job, yeah, uh, you could just close your eyes and just and there's a special instructions in the movie theater to play this twice as loud as every other movie because the movie's called a mic it loud. Yeah, and the movie the music sounds better loud. Yeah, and that's like a, a perfect title for it too. Well, thank you. It loud. Thank you. Um, how long did this take to shoot? Well, documentaries are different than normal movies. Um, yeah. You can shoot a couple days here, mm -hmm. a couple days there. Um, I'm constantly editing. I think documentaries are made in the editing room. You yeah, kind of, absolutely. Because you don't have a script, you're kind of building it, um, these little pieces that you shoot in different places. So we were shooting on and off for a year. Um, we'd go to Dublin for a little while, go to London for a little while, go to mm -hmm. Nashville for a little while. But Jack would play in Austin. We filmed some of my favorite stuff I filmed in Austin here in Texas. Yeah. Um, at Stubbs, oh, okay, with yeah. the rock on tour. Yeah, if you see the end of the movie when they're all coming on stage, and, yeah, and Jack playing and his, uh, there's a scene where he's playing so hard that his fingers start to bleed. Yeah, he doesn't even know it, and you see the blood all over his guitar. That was in Austin, Texas, at Stubbs. That was like a great cinematography too, because it just like stayed on it. And yeah, thank you. Um, so you know, you you've done like TV and feature length films and documentaries. What do you enjoy like the most? I love documentaries. Yeah. I mean, I, I just finished the pilot to Melrose Place, mm -hmm. which is in a different planet. I'll, I'll, you know, but but I love uh, you know the fact that you can go and in a documentary and you can go to the actual studio where you two writes its songs, yeah. and and be there and see that it's you know as a person just as a it, it feels rather than if you do make a movie you, you know you pretend you're doing that. The documentary, you're actually there. Yeah. And the movie, it actually takes you there. Yeah, and you get to like do a lot of traveling too, so that's like a, a yeah. bonus for like, documentaries. Yeah. All right, for my last question, the, the song that they finally collaborate on, uh, Take a Lot Off Fanny, whose idea was that? That's called uh, The Weight. It's a, yeah. Um, and the, the, the big climax, I think, is a song before, which is in, in My Time of Dying, which is a Led Zeppelin song. Mm -hmm. And, you know... You're kind of wondering in this movie whether they actually like each other because they come from such different styles. In the end, they start to play slide guitar, and each one of them is is expressing themselves in different ways. And it was so loud and so raucous that I was like, well, "Why don't we change the tone and just play some acoustic?" Yeah. Because uh, I'd heard someone playing acoustic just sort of practicing, and it sounded so good. So I was like, "You guys want to play an acoustic song together?" And they go, "Well, we don't know one." And then Edge was like, well, "Why don't we play the weight?" It's awesome. Which was a sentimental favorite because it's in the movie, the, La the Scorsese's movie, The Last Waltz, which if you yeah. like rock documentaries, it's one of the best. Yeah, it's fantastic. And that's a big song in that movie. Yeah. And you see them learn. It was fun in the movie is you see them. Because they're learning it. They actually have to go and find the chords and play it. And, and, and the, you watch these guys learn how to play a song together. So. And it's like fast, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cool. Well, uh, I guess that's it. Um, that's the phone saying that we're wrapping up. Or something. <laughs> Stop talking, Chase. <laughs> This is the hall where Levy Breaks was recorded. This brings back some memories. I play a really old guitars, plastic guitars. The neck's a little bit bent and they settle a little bit out of tune and I want it to be a struggle. This instrument was just calling out to me. 20 minutes in this store just to find the sound of the band. I love effects units. And it's very rare that he will use the same sound in 23 songs. This is what I'm actually playing. The rest is the foot pedal, the effects, the whole thing. Might get loud for a second. We're all attempting to share something with another human being. Every night that we went on stage, it was living, totally living. Total commitment, getting across what you wanted to say. But it just comes from the creative spark, really. That family of storytellers. And when I go 
He was supposed to join the family, become part of it. That's why I took up the guitar in the first place. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> Who says you need to buy a guitar?